All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast here today with your host, Richard Fu from richardfu.com and The Ultimate Man. And today, guys, I got a really cool guy on the show. And I don't say this lightly because, you know, when I caught up with Liam, he was just a ball of energy. He's just got so many amazing ideas and he's just so much fun to hang around, right? He's, he's the guy who's created Small Today. It's a huge business community found on LinkedIn now. I believe it's over 100,000 business owners and entrepreneurs on there. He helps them really connect with each other, form partnerships. And not only that, he's made a huge shift now because the way they actually connected was because he was running his very first virtual summit. Just like how we did Ultimate Man Summit, he was running the LinkedIn Success Summit. And from there, he's gone on to run on other summits, including email marketing, Instagram, and another upcoming one which is all about video marketing. And I'm really excited to have him on the show. So guys, please welcome Liam Austin on the show. Liam, good to have you on, bro. Hey, Richard. Yeah, it's really a uh, pleasure to be here. Thanks for inviting me on. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a bit of a journey since uh, we, we met up uh, in that coffee shop in, in Sydney. Uh, we've come a long way. Yeah, we, as you said, we've done, we've done three summits now uh, off the back of the success of our, of our first one. And it's really helped us grow the business. So, uh, pretty excited about, um, the journey thus far. Awesome, man. And I know, I know, man, just seeing you grow is exciting, brother. And so Liam, for the people who haven't heard about you or small today, right. And what your other journeys have been, could you give us a bit of a brief, brief background about that, man? Yeah, so Small Today is an online community of entrepreneurs, small business owners, and we provide them with education. So we run online summits, which are completely free online events. So you can watch them from the, the safety or the comfort of your couch or your office. Uh, and we invite 30 plus experts on that topic uh, to teach their teach the audience about how they've used uh, a specific tactic to become successful, to get more leads, sales, and profit in their business. And we've, as you've mentioned, we've done LinkedIn. We started off with, okay, how do you generate leads and sales out of LinkedIn? How do you network? How do you build your personal brand on that platform? Uh, and then we moved into email marketing, which is all about, well, how do you... Uh, attract people onto your email list. Why is email important? If you're not using email, you should if you're a business owner. Um, and then how do you nurture those people, um, the sequences? And you can be really, really specific in terms of tagging people based on their behavior. So you can give value that's relevant to people. And that's what is so, so important. What I've learned over the last uh, nine months uh, running these events, summits, and talking to over 100 um, proven entrepreneurs and uh, really successful business people that it is all about providing value and being relevant at the same time. And then our third one we just ran, which was uh, on Instagram, um, how to build a following and how to convert the, that following into, into leads, into email subscribers, into ultimate customers for your business. Uh, so, yeah, small today, that's pretty much us in a nutshell. Uh, if you've missed any of those past events, you can get access to all of those training sessions plus so they're videos mp3s um pdf action guides so we just run through the in point form what the most specific um actionable takeaways are from each of the sessions plus a, a private community that we give access to all the members uh and you can get that via smalltoday.com oh awesome man love it love it and let's go in a little bit back in time here, Liam, because when you first created Small Today, it wasn't intended to be a platform where you could deliver that education and deliver all these virtual summits, right? Well, how did you start it off, man? And then how did you actually like pivot and tweak it so that you got to where you're at today? Yeah, I think I quite like uh, this story because there's a big lesson in it uh, for me, I think, um, going through this entrepreneurial journey myself. Uh, I started a LinkedIn group back in 2008, so eight years ago now, uh, and it was called, well, it is called the Small Business Network, and it is now the second largest group on LinkedIn for small business, for entrepreneurs. If you type in either of those keywords into the search bar uh, in LinkedIn and you search for groups, uh, the Small Business Network, my group will pop up in one of the top one or two results, which is really, really cool. Uh, we've got over 120,000 members now. It's growing by 700 plus per week new members which is really really cool uh, so between 100 and 200 new um, small business owners coming in there to network to learn to um, build business partnerships uh, and to really 
uh, educate themselves specifically what we focus on is generating leads sales and profit for the business so started that in 2008 uh, and about phew, a year and a half ago um, I was ignoring a lot of the, the group not spending as much time and effort into it uh, as I should Mm -hmm. uh, I was getting these messages from the members, connection requests on LinkedIn um, saying, hey, you know, you should be doing more with this group. We've got so many amazing people in here uh, that I want to learn from, that I want to connect with. Can, can you help facilitate that? And I was like, okay, well, what do you guys want? And so I was, went out and spoke to members um, on the telephone via Skype. Uh, online via email, as well as I did, I did a few surveys out to the audience to figure out, well, I knew who the audience was because LinkedIn gives some really good statistics, well, used to, uh, gives some really good statistics on who your audience was uh, within the groups of LinkedIn. So I could see that most of our audience was from the US, uh, that they were professionals, uh, small business owners, founders, uh, along that kind of line of thinking. Um, and so with the surveys would be specific about, okay, what are you struggling with in your business? Uh, what do you want um, more in your life, out of your business? What are the results? What are your goals, objectives? Uh, and compiling all those results together to figure out, okay, what do these people want? Uh, and from that, it was, they wanted to network with others. They wanted to uh, learn from experts specifically. Uh, as well as they were professionals, a lot of them B2Bs being mm -hmm. on LinkedIn, uh, wanting to connect with other professionals on there to do business. Uh, so we ran a, a couple of tests where we provided some free webinars and training on and around LinkedIn. And so we, I invited a couple of experts to come in and we did two uh, separate training sessions to see how that went. And the, just the response was phenomenal. And we, I tried a few different other things, but LinkedIn training um, stood out. Uh, and it, it was kind of obvious, it kind of, uh, you know, felt like uh, it was meant to be uh, and this is what the people wanted. So we ended up moving that from just a one or two free training sessions into a full-blown summit online conference with 30 plus LinkedIn experts who were, you know, we had four LinkedIn influencers on there. Um, we had authors on there. We had like multimillionaires. People, there was one guy who actually had made $1 million he could directly attribute to LinkedIn um, from business. So it was really cool to hear all the strategies and tactics uh, and the tools people were using to generate leads from LinkedIn. Wow, man. That's amazing, man. And I, I love that, you know, you, you share that story so honestly in the fact that you've been running for eight years. But it wasn't for like you know the first four, five, six years. You, know, you just let it run. You let it grow organically. But at the same time, they hit a point where you kind of just kind of like it almost fell to the wayside. And that's a, that's a beautiful part, right? Is that how often do we get so close? And this is what entrepreneurship and business is: is that we get to a point where we hit the ninety-nine percent, then we're like, oh, I don't know what, if I really want to continue doing this. And so, you know. What drove you to continue doing it, man? That's what I really want to understand. Like, what drove you? Like, anyone at that point could have been like, I'm tired of this group because I've got this many members. It's great, but I don't know what to do with it so that I can actually make an income from this. Yeah, so uh, what drove me was a year and a half ago, members were just pounding at my door, you know, sending me messages on LinkedIn, connection requests, and I just couldn't ignore them anymore. It was just like, Liam, like you're doing a disservice to this group, to these people if you don't actually help them if you don't create something for them. So, and this is where the lessons I think uh, that I mentioned before, which I learned quite a lot from, which was literally, you need to listen to your audience, um, figure out you know, what they're struggling with, what their pain points are, what their problems are, and how you can create um, a solution to their problems. So that's what really drove and, and motivated me to take that next step from just having this group, this audience. Uh, and the other lesson that I think is really important and something that uh, every entrepreneur out there should be looking to do is build an audience, build a following, whether that's on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Facebook, uh, on, you know, there's Snapchat, there's so many different places you can do it now uh, and start collecting email addresses. Even if you don't even know what product or service you're going to sell to them, you just know you're passionate about helping these types of people or this audience, uh, or you've gone through this kind of pain or you've been in that position before 
and then just go out there and survey them, ask them what they want, and then you can create that specific product or, or service to help those, uh, that audience that you've already built. So if you're thinking of, oh, I'm starting a business, I don't know what to start or what my product is or what price point, don't worry about any of that stuff. Start building an audience like now, today. Just start get building a following on any of those social networks and start collecting email addresses. And well, at least for me, it, like I did surveys, I spoke to my audience uh, and we figured it out. And now uh, we're, I'm proud to say we're actually going to hire our second uh, employee, which is which is really really cool. Oh, epic, brother! And I love what you're saying here because it's like what my mentor says a lot is, you know, build that well before you get thirsty. Yeah, don't wait until you get thirsty and then you, you you're like, oh my god, we're gonna drink, right? Build that well first, and it sounded like you built that well for like a good five six years, and then finally cracked it open and said, all right, here we go. And talk us through this, then, Liam. I mean, talk us through this is like, how did you actually reach out and connect with? you know, these people that you put in, right? These, you put in some pretty big names as well. Like, um, for example, on the email marketing, uh, some, I know you had like Ben Settle on, the, on there and you know, you got some huge other people in terms of the Instagram one. And I'm, getting, I'm guessing in this video one that you got, you got some even bigger stars. And so how do you, for the people who are starting out, people who, you know, may not have that following at the moment, how did you go through and reach out to these people and actually get them to, you know, come onto the summit? Yeah, I'm very, uh, very proud and, and lucky and humbled by the, the speakers that we've had uh, come and speak at our Small Today Summits. Uh, we, yeah, as I mentioned, we had LinkedIn influencers. So these are kind of the top 500 people that LinkedIn have chosen as influencers uh, on their platform, which is huge. These are guys like uh, Richard Branson, um, Bill Gates, all these kind of guys. Uh, and we got four of these influencers to speak at the summit. Email marketing, we had some huge guys there speak as well. Instagram, we had people speaking who had over 1 million followers. I think we had five um, people speak at the summit who had built over a following, an audience of over a million people. That's huge. And they were turning, like, this is in the space of two or three years. Um, Instagram hasn't been around for a long, long time. Mm. So it's still a very early stage platform and there's still a lot of opportunity there too. So these people had built up uh, an audience of over a million people um, and some of them maybe only 10, 20, 30,000 people and they were making money directly from Instagram, selling their products or services directly through the audience that they'd built on Instagram. And they'd built this audience without even knowing what their product or service was going to be. And some of them still haven't quite figured it out. Some are still promoting other people's products and services to their audience. So. Uh, yeah, I can't harp on it more how much how important it is to kind of build your own audience and uh, to actually create that business. And so for, for, for me, what made it easier to reach out to these people and for them to say, yes, it's worth it for me was I had the audience, right? I, I built an audience. I built a following. They wanted to reach and get out in front of that audience. So I would, I'd leverage that. I'd say, okay, I'm running this online event. I've got 100,000 people in my LinkedIn group. I've got 100,000 you know, small business owners, entrepreneurs who want to hear from you. You want to just spend one hour on the phone with me and we can push out your very best you know, tactic and walk through it step by step so other people can replicate those, you know, those tactics and uh, those steps into their own businesses to get results. Uh, and that's all it was. It was literally we had a following, we had an audience. It, it is so powerful. I can't yeah. kind of stress enough how important it's been in, in the success of my business. Oh, man. Critical, critical, man. I love that, that tactic that you shared there. And so, you know, when I was creating my own summit, man, and, you know, I had to pick like, you know, every summit, it's like, it's like a big event, right? You have a keynote, right? You have someone who's like the backbone, someone who pulls in, you know, who's people like, oh, you got that guy in, and then I'll for sure I'll come on as well, right? So for me, I had like, you know, John Martini and John Gray, and they're like, oh, wow, there's some pretty big people on there. And so let me, let me ask, how did you find out who's like your A-list, right? The, the, A, the A star that you get on, because usually in the summit, I think we need, maybe two or three people who are at that level so that they attract all these other people who are you know, at the next tier and then, and then the tier after that, right? Who, how did you come up with your list of like the A-list people that you want to get on, the, on each of these summits and how did you approach them? Yeah, uh, we were talking uh, just prior to this interview about uh, you know, processes, right? Systems. Yeah. And uh, that's what we, we use. We've now processed this. We've created a system of it where we identify 
Um, speakers who have spoken already on the topic, so they've already been identified as an expert, so they might have spoken at an, an event, um, a conference somewhere, they might have been on a podcast, they might have been interviewed on TV, they might have their own um, huge following on the subject, uh, for instance, those uh, LinkedIn influencers or those Instagram um, celebrities, <laughs> if you like, um, or influencers, these social media influencers, right? And you can identify them based on the engagement and size of their following. And if they've got a really large following and they're getting an engagement and their audience loves them, you know that that's a, that's a draw card for people, not only for other people outside of their own audience, but people within their own audience too. So you can drive more people towards your business and what you do based on that relationship you've now got with that influencer and that influence they have over their own audience mm. to recommend you and, and your business. So um, that's what we do. We've, we've leveraged uh, these A-listers as well as B-listers and C-listers, people who have an audience, who have a relationship, a, a deep engagement uh, with their target customers and their audience. And we ask them to come and uh, speak and educate our own audience uh, at the same time inviting their audience to the event which is free to come and attend uh, packed full of value and that recommendation is worth so so much more than just hearing about us as a cold uh, kind of outreach so whether that's an advertisement uh, online or um, uh, maybe it's something that we've reached out personally uh, to them it it's not, it's a cold lead, right? It's, it's mm -hmm. not something that's going to be able, you're not going to be able to convert them straight away. But as soon as you're recommended from someone else, uh, they, they become a warm lead and you can convert them so, so much easier because you've, they've come to you and um, been recommended to you. So it's a lot easier to then turn them from that lead into an actual customer. Yeah, gotcha, gotcha. And do you usually go for the A-listers first and then you approach your B-listers and C-listers? Is that how your system works? Um, yes and no. Uh, we, we try to identify, I suppose, the A and B-listers. Mm -hmm. um, we send out uh, a lot of the invites uh, in a bunch all together. Mm -hmm. And the idea of that is we know that uh, we're going to get some responses instantly. And yes, I'd love to be a part of it because why we're going to put them in front of a an audience of 100,000 people and um, they're going to be able to teach the audience about what they do and their products and services and their business and who they are, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we get those instant responses and then bang, straight away we can put these speakers up on the website saying they're going to be attending the event. Mm -hmm. And the A-listers who may be a bit shy, well, what is this all about, suddenly see, all right, we've got, there's some speakers already mm -hmm. at the event. I know some of these people. I can probably jump in and, and um, say yes to this as well. Uh, and then you can also put a bit of pressure as well, saying, hey, we've only got a limited amount of spots here. Mm -hmm. It is filling up fast. Uh, you know, just a few days ago, we had no speakers and already we've had a fantastic response from people wanting to get involved in this. Uh, recommendations from speakers to invite other speakers onto the event. So you better be quick so you don't miss out um, and uh, that can help sometimes close uh, some of the people who are on the fence yeah. undecided whether to, to join you or not. Mm, great, great. And I know you're probably not too experienced with this and this is something I wanted to share in terms of my own uh, summit experience is that if you're not as lucky as Liam, right, to have 100,000 people following you or a community that big, sometimes that's why, you know, if you have that one or two A-list speakers that say they're going to come on, then you can use that as leverage as well. Right when you approach the B and C listers, it's like, look, I got this guy who's coming on, or this this girl's coming on the on the web on the summit as well. Would you like to be, you know, your face next to them, basically, right? And that that's that's that builds credibility, that builds, you know, uh, a high engagement from the other people to say, actually, I do want to be seen at the same level as this role model, this influencer. You're saying, so I think that's another great tactic to follow through as well. And so, awesome, man. And, how did uh, one last question here, Liam, in terms of your summits? So, first off, you created a LinkedIn summit, and then I know when we sat down for coffee, you were going to create a second one. How do you decide what to do your next summit on? And because I think this is interesting, not many people go ahead and do a, a another summit that is quite different from the first one. So, how did you was it more listening to the audience? 
Yeah, uh, exactly. Um, it was listening to the audience, asking them what they wanted, what they were struggling with. Uh, and it flowed actually quite nicely. Uh, and why I say that was because a lot of the experts we had come speak at the LinkedIn Summit were saying, all right, you've the first thing you want to be doing on people on LinkedIn uh, the ultimate goal is to get people off LinkedIn and what that meant what they meant by that was get their email address get them on the telephone get a face-to-face -face meeting uh, and the whole idea of that is to close the sale to take them further through the funnel from from a lead where you introduce yourself you you learn about them a little bit you gave them value on LinkedIn Mm -hmm. Then you want to ultimately get their email address, get them as a subscriber, take them through your funnel, get that face-to-face -face meeting uh, and close it. So that's where email marketing just flew, um, will fit in perfectly really into that that next. All right, so I've connected with someone on LinkedIn. I've built a relationship. I know they're – because LinkedIn, just uh, for people who don't know, has a really um, powerful uh, advanced search feature where you can – be really specific about who your target audience is and drill down with the advanced search feature on LinkedIn. There's 400 million people on LinkedIn, right? Uh, drill down and find out the exact target customer or the most likely people that are going to convert into customers for your business. And once you've done that, okay, you want to build a relationship with them, provide value on LinkedIn as much as possible over a period of time, and then get them off LinkedIn and mm. ultimately email was that next step for any online entrepreneurs, online businesses owners out there as well as just small business owners who want to continue nurturing that relationship via email because if you look at LinkedIn or any of the other social networks, it's, you can view it as rented property. Yes, we do have 120,000 members on LinkedIn but we're restricted to what we can do. We can only email them once per week, right? That's only 50 times per year. Um, the email is coming from LinkedIn. It's not coming from myself or from small today. Um, and every time maybe you post something on social media, it doesn't reach every single person. Yes. By email, you, you reach them every single time, um, which is, you know, it's proven time and time again. It's the, the most valuable, opened, um, clicked and sales generating marketing tactic uh, or channel that's that's available on the market today. Oh man, that's awesome! I love it, man. I love it. And so, you know, Liam, we're gonna start wrapping up the show. It's been amazing just learning and hearing about your story and your journey. And as we wrap up the show here, man, we're gonna go into the quick fire questions. Does that sound good with you? Yeah, let's go for it, man. All right, man. All right, we start off with our signature question here, Liam. It's called the time travel moment. If you could go back to any moment in little Liam's life, right? Go back 10, 15, 20 years, whatever it is, you could tell yourself one thing. What would you go, what would you go back to and what would you say to it, little Liam? All right, I'd go back to when I was probably just coming out of school when I was going to university and um, I was, I'm just going to maybe change this a little bit. I would probably take a second guess on whether I would actually go to university. <laughs> but I'd learn from experts. I'd identify exactly what my passion is, uh, where I want to go, who I want to learn from, where I want to be, um, and identify those experts who have already reached those places and achieved those goals and learn from them. So um, identify them, connect with them, provide value, build a relationship with them, and buy their courses, listen to their um, speeches, uh, attend their training sessions, their webinars, and just absorb as much information as possible and then take action on that learning. And I think um, that's what I'm doing now in my business, getting fantastic results from it. And I just, and, and, and as well, like our community, our audience, our members are getting fantastic results from learning from the experts that we're um, able to share with them. And so if I could go back, yeah, to when I was 18 or so and just identify those experts and learn from them and then take action on it. Um, wow. Who knows? Who knows where I've been today? Oh, love it, man. Love it. Awesome. The next question I have for you, Liam, is I'm sure you've read a lot of books. I'm sure you have, a, you know, a few favorites, but if you had to pick one that the you know, people were listening, people watching, what would that book be that, that is a total must read for them? 
this is an easy one for me. Uh, it's called The Lean Startup by Eric Rees. And the point of this is it kind of uh, supports everything I've been saying. It's just like, just get started. Just do it. Start testing. Uh, start building an audience. Uh, and then start asking what you can build for them. And you can even start selling your product or service before it's even ready. You can create it after you've um, sold it, right? You pre-sell tickets to events. The event hasn't happened yet. Um, pre-sell. Pre-sell your product, your service, your course, whatever it is. Uh, you know, there's Kickstarter campaigns that do this already. Um, and Eric Rees' book, the, the Lean Startup, goes through his methodology on how to actually you know, identify whether the product or service you're even thinking of that you're creating is going to work. And by work, it means is there going to be actual paying um, you know, uh, customers willing to fork out, pull out their wallet, fork out money for your product or service or your idea. And yeah, I, I highly recommend that book for anyone thinking of, of starting a business. Awesome, man. Awesome. We'll add that into the show notes below as well. And this is a question that I'm interested to get your perspective on, Liam. It's, you know, for our brand, our ultimate man, it's, you know, so our mission is to help bridge this gap this gap for men because I think there's a big gap between where the modern world is and where men are at in, in the world right now. And if I was to put this to you and I was to ask you, you know, what's the world missing from modern men? What's the one thing that more of these men who are listening on this show here need to do in order to step up to be where the world needs them to be? What would that one thing be, do you think? Um, one of the things that I've learned, which was so powerful, which I didn't expect maybe to learn from uh, the over 100 um, you know, proven entrepreneurs that I've, I've spoken to over the past nine months was being authentic. Yeah. Uh, just being real, being yourself uh, is so powerful. Like you and I are just talking here, um, video, people have been able to see our reactions, our expressions, our face, getting to know us a little bit better mm -hmm. um, builds trust. Uh, and that trust takes you so, so much closer for them being willing to trust you with their credit card, with their money, that your product or service is going to be um, a solution to their problem. So be authentic, be real, um, and as often as you can, provide value to your audience and ask them what they need, what they're struggling with, and keep providing that value in an authentic way that's real uh, to you. Because uh, people can spot it when you're being fake, um, where you're trying to maybe not be, as, well, not be authentic and not be real. Um, mm. People can spot that a mile away and bang straight away, you're going to lose their trust or credibility and you won't sell them anything at all. Yeah. Awesome, man. Awesome. And next question I have for you here. And Liam, this is one that interests me is more, you know, how do you know when you're on like your true purpose? For you, right? With small businesses, uh, small today, how do you know you're on the right purpose and that you know it's it's working for you? Like, how would you describe that to someone? Uh, so for for me personally, it's mm -hmm. been my audience giving me feedback, saying, "Wow, William, thank you so much for pulling together." Uh, this event. Thanks very much for bringing this specific speaker. I learned so much from him or her. Um, you've provided so much value to my business. I've managed to go from X in sales to another, you know, two X or three X in sales because of what I learned from your events, from your speakers. Uh, and that feedback uh, is no, like, you know, I know I'm on the right track when I'm getting people saying, wow, this is awesome. This is fantastic. This is great. If you're not getting that feedback, um, ask for it, ask for it. And, uh, you'll soon realize whether you're on the right track, ask your audience, you know, um, did you like, did you not like rating, you know, you can do surveys, you can jump on a, a live hangout, whether it's on Google Hangouts or whether it's on Facebook Live and just talk to your audience and uh, get feedback. Uh, that's the ultimate way to know whether you're uh, on the right track and uh, taking that one step further, sales. Um, you might get all this fantastic positive feedback in the world, but if no one's buying, are you on the right track? Mm. Are you generating any revenue for your business? You should be tracking your, your sales, your revenue, your profits um, as much as possible to really identify, yes, is the business on the right track? 
which, you know, is a different measurement maybe than is my audience happy? Am I giving value to them? Yep. Um, but they also intersect and um, that's the ultimate point where you want to be uh, as a business owner. Oh, I love that piece of advice. Like seriously, man, it's like get the feedback. And I think so often, especially especially in business, even this, I've done this for myself, is we put something out there and then we're afraid to find out what the feedback is because it could be something that we don't want to hear, isn't it, man? Sorry, mate, I lost you just there. So you got me back here, man? Yep, yep, you're back. Yeah, I was saying, uh, that's amazing advice. Uh, I really enjoyed that part that you say, you know, go get the feedback because how often do we put something out there on, you know, email or social media or whatever to our audience and then we're afraid to ask for feedback. We're afraid to figure out, to find out if they like it, they don't like it. And, you know, I think you said, you say it so simply, man, is that if we get the feedback, then we can go back and tweak. I think a lot of people put so much emphasis on the feedback, having to be the perfect feedback, right? Having to be great, having to be able to add value. And so I think it's great that you highlight that. Go get the feedback and then if, if it's not working, then fine, go do something else, right? See it as that point. See it as a, a, a guide post in the road, isn't it, man? Yeah, and uh, just uh, like right now, we're living in an online digital world. It's so easy to get this feedback. Um, social media, you know, being able to reach your audience like this on a daily basis, uh, multiple times a day was impossible, like, you know, a few years ago. And now you can do it. Um, if you, in terms of tools, Google Forms, you just jump onto Google, create a free survey, super simple drag and drop, uh, don't need any coding skills. They give you a link and you can send it out to your audience on, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, wherever they are, and, and start getting that feedback immediately. Uh, and there's no excuses because it is super simple. You can set it all up in, in, in a matter of 15 minutes out of your day. Yeah, love it, man. Love it. So, Liam, man, has there been anything else you wanted to add before we wrap up the show that we haven't had a chance to talk about here on the show? Um, yeah, I think just in terms of being, being the ultimate man, be yourself, be authentic, be your best self, right? Just, uh, every time I've been learning about video at the moment, that's our next summit coming up and it's all about, you know, being your best self, trying to smile every time you're on camera, uh, to your audience, uh, but be authentic and be real, be your best self. So your audience, um, knows who you are. And if you do bump into them, into them in the street, uh, or a face-to-face -face, uh, meeting, they're going to go, do you know what? You're exactly what came across in your pamphlets on the introduction, introductory video, on your emails that I've been receiving. You're, you're exactly the same. Mm. And that's exactly what you want because you've been building all this trust um, online uh, via your pamphlets or via your marketing. And when you meet them face-to-face, -face, you want to, carry on that credibility and that trust uh, to ultimately hopefully close close your business awesome man awesome liam man it's been amazing chatting here with you man and so if people want to learn more about yourself or the summits that you've held and, and where to get them where's the best place to go uh, you can check out smalltoday.com. That's where you can get access to, to all our summits and become part of uh, the Small Today community. Uh, you can also email me if you've got any questions about this, liam at smalltoday.com. There's probably the best two places to reach out to me. If you do become a member of smalltoday.com as well, uh, we've got hundreds of members in there and I'm in there on a daily basis and can obviously answer any of your questions in there as well. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, Liam, man, thank you, brother, for jumping on the show. I really appreciate you sharing your wisdom, your insights. It's been awesome having you on the show, man. Yeah, awesome, Richard. Thanks very much for having me. I uh, wish you the best of luck on, on your adventure as well uh, over in Asia. Thank you, man. And guys, this wraps up another episode of the Forge Your Life podcast today with Liam Austin, the summit expert, right? Ripping it up with small today. And I, want, I know this one thing. I know that Liam and I don't want to keep this a secret anymore. This must go out to other people. So if you're listening, if you're watching, make sure you share this. Make sure you go on iTunes to rate the show so that we can get this message out there to more people, not just Liam's message, but other guests on the show as well. And of course, guys, remember to head on over to richardfoo.com to get the show notes and all the resources that Liam has shared on the show. And finally, remember to go out there, go live with love and go smash it. And I'll see you again on the next one.